Okay, hello, welcome to the second in a short revision series looking at examples uh, of monopsony power in different markets and the impact this can have on economic welfare and especially the impact on consumers. Now, this second video will focus on using analysis diagrams to help explain the possible impact of monopsony. Here's a question. Analyze how monopsony power might affect price, output and profits of those firms who have it. Well, don't forget uh, that monopsony power is when a firm has buying power or bargaining power in a market. And we're going to focus here on product markets. We do have a separate video series on monopsony in the labour market, which is well worth looking at if that's the focus of your studies. Well, what are the main potential benefits of monopsony power for a firm, a business with big buying power, like a supermarket buying supplies from farmers, uh, or, or businesses like Amazon who have huge buying power from other manufacturers. The first obvious benefit, I guess, is it allows firms to achieve lower costs. And it's a good example of what we call a purchasing economy of scale. You see, if you're buying in bulk, if you're having, if you're trying to negotiate huge buying contracts with another supplier, you essentially have the power in the negotiation. And that, in theory, allows you to drive down the cost of your supplies. Now, those lower purchase costs can help bring about higher super normal profits, profits above normal. And ultimately, if you're a listed company, uh, that increases the returns, the dividends for shareholders and perhaps an increase in the share price. Oh, by the way, don't be afraid to use concepts from your year 12 studies in economics. An example here is producer surplus. So if monopsony power leads to higher profit as measured by producer surplus, another benefit could be that that would be used to provide the funds, the finance to help fund capital investment or to put money into research and development. So essentially the benefits to firms come from lower costs and higher prices. Now here's a strong analysis diagram that you can use. The initial profit maximizing output is Q1 with price P1 charged per unit. Well, uh, the profit is shown in this diagram by the yellow shaded area. Monopsony power might be used to help bring down the average and marginal costs for a firm. You know, essentially, you're using that bargaining power to lower the costs of supply. So I've now shifted my cost curve down from MC1, essentially, to MC2. The bargaining power with suppliers has helped to bring down the unit cost of supply. Now, assuming the revenue curve stay the same, then this leads to a higher equilibrium profit maximizing output of Q2 and the price falls from P1 to P2. So monopsony power in theory brings prices down, but it also has a consequence for profits because costs are lower. And uh, the total you can ship, you see here the total super normal profit shown by the shaded area, the little orangey, pinky shaded area, uh, has increased. So monopsony power is a way of increasing the profits of businesses. This kind of analysis diagram would be tremendous to use in an assignment on monopsony. And what ways might monopsony power improve consumer welfare? To what extent might consumers, the final consumers of goods and services, also benefit from monopsony? A couple of examples spring to mind. The first one relates back to the previous diagram uh, that consumers in some markets may gain from lower prices. If, that's a big if, if the monopsonists pass on some of those cost savings in the form of uh, lower prices, then consumers may gain. Uh, and uh, develop the point. So if prices go down, people's real incomes increase. And again, don't be afraid to use a year 12 concept. Uh, we can show how monopsony could lead to increased consumer surplus. We'll come back to that diagram in a second. A slightly wider point is that if you think about things like the NHS, the National Health Service is buying in bulk, PPE, drugs for use in, in healthcare treatments, etc. Well, that's an example of monopsony power. And in theory, that buying power could lead to better value for money for taxpayers. The NHS could use its bargaining power to cut the prices of the, of the drugs they have to buy. And those cost savings with a given NHS budget might allow more people to be treated. 
Another good example could be the government buying or tendering out a big purchases of materials for construction projects, including social housing. Let's go back to our analysis diagram. Consumer surplus at the original profit maximizing price, so which is P1, is area A, B, C. Of course, the yellow area is supernormal profit. Now, that fall in costs brings the price down, and a fall in prices due to lower costs will increase the level of consumer surplus by area B, C, E, D. So, in theory, in theory, monopsony power can help both producers and consumers. But of course, you'll want to evaluate those points. You want to be challenged and question those points. So in what way might monopsony power harm consumer welfare? Well, here's a few points. First of all, uh, let's think about the wider supply chain, not just the final goods and services bought and sold. Businesses may use their monopsony power, their buying power, to squeeze lower prices out of their suppliers. And that, of course, will reduce the profits of firms further down the supply chain. Indeed, it may well cause lower wages, lower incomes for those people employed in supply chain businesses. A really good example has been this continuous battle in many ways uh, between the supermarkets and farmers and other growers to get a decent price for the milk that they are producing. There was a time a few years ago when farmers were literally uh, throwing milk away because the, the price they were getting wouldn't or couldn't cover the cost of production. They were making subnormal profits and many farmers were leaving the industry. Now, if growers don't get a good price, if farmers don't get a decent price, they may well leave the sector. And of course, you could then argue that consumers will be less faced with less choice and perhaps higher prices if that happens. So think about the impact of monopsony power on the supply chain of businesses and the supply chain within industries. There is a related point to do with the labour market. Again, we have a separate video on monopsony power in the labour market. But firms with major buying power and hiring workers could drive wages down throughout the supply chain. Uh, Tesco trying to impose cost cuts and things. And that, again, could impact negatively on the real incomes of those people employed in supply chain businesses. What we'll do in the next video... The third video of four is think about the policies, the different forms of intervention that might be used to control the exploitation of monopsony power.